you can never have an excuse. Like this guy's played, he's an old war horse who's played like 15 years at this point uh-huh. and, and not a negative bone in his body when it came to the game. And, you know, we could be complaining about how tired we are because it was a back to back, but good old D was like, I feel great. Are you ready to go tonight? And he can kind of give you that look. <laughs> I remember like, so I, when Alicia was not in Ottawa a ton and I was living on my own. So we spent a lot of time together. Um, I can think of like, a few times after a Saturday night game, we have a couple of beers on Sunday. Like he'd invite me over for like dinner or like to watch football in the afternoon. He would like make me ride the stationary bike at his house with him. <laughs> I'm like, you are so nuts. Like we like, we haven't had a day off in like seven or eight days. Like this is our day yeah. off. He's like, you need to sweat. I'm like, <laughs> so like there I am like in my like underwear or like, if you let me borrow a pair of shorts, like riding the stationary bike in his basement. But like, yeah. you know, it's like, how, how, how great is that? Like he had an unbelievable career, but the mentality that he had probably carried him further than anything else that he had physically or like skill wise, he wasn't going to beat him if he had a say in it. So um, very appreciative of, of everything that he's done for me. And uh, it's been a fun relationship. Matt, I don't know if you can relate to this, but when was that lockout, the last lockout, 2013? And we had like yep. meetings in uh, New York and I went to that meeting. I flew down there and I was like, you know, playing world champions and stuff, championships and stuff is cool because you get to meet different guys that maybe hate you or you hate them. Um, and then you see like guys are really, really great guys. Like everyone from every team was there and I ended up hanging out with like all these random all these random guys from other teams that you wouldn't normally think that, you know, you'd get along with, but it's funny how hockey works out. All the guys are pretty darn good guys. Yeah. Same, same with my experience with like with Dion, we were talking about him here just before we came on and laughing about yeah. him. just his overall personality. I hated him. I hated him as a player. <laughs> he was my first NHL fight. Did not like Dion Phaneuf. And then I, I like you, I met him at the world championships and we hit it off right away. I'm like, wow. We actually have a lot more in common than I thought. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know what know. that says about me, but but you're right. Like there, you always get like these impressions of players just from playing against them, and then all of a sudden you meet them off the ice. Turns out they usually are pretty good dudes, right? Yeah, and and you know what? I remember Dion coming back after that year, and, and uh, he was talking about you a lot. So it's kind of funny how things work out that way. Okay, why don't you, you guys are getting very big. Why don't you wait for like another 20 episodes and we'll do like Noodles 2. And you and I could tell stories of like certain players because there was some crossover. You're a lot younger than me, but we can tell Dion stories. Yes, like I had had Dion as a rookie. And, you know, so D was this crazy, you know, hard hitting like lunatic, which... um, (laughs) You know, now I, I I mean, he's more subdued. He'll get into the wine and FaceTime me once in a while, which I enjoy. Yeah. No, he loves his FaceTimes. <laughs> he'll, he'll send me FaceTimes and I'm like, I have to like gas him on a lot of them. Because like, I don't are. I'm not in the mood for this right now. <laughs> well, because it's so random. It'll be a Monday at eight yes. o'clock. And you're like, I'm just putting the kids down. And yeah. he's like, you know, he's a bottle deep sitting at his, <laughs> you know, com- compound in, in PEI, PEI, which is, have you been there? No, he's, he's trying to get me to go out there a lot. I'm, I'm always coming up with excuses, but I got to get out there. You got to get out there. Maybe we should all, you know what you could do once you get Dion to open up a little bit, like go tape out there. Cause he'll have you out. You guys fishing, drinking, all of that. I just, I don't fish. I don't golf. I'm just good at the, the after fishing or during fishing <laughs> stuff and, and the after yeah. golf. But, but like, he's got a great compound out there and he's so welcoming and, He's such a great guy. I don't, I mean, there's another thing. There was a time uh, where Dion and I'm, my two closest buddies were Dion and Chad from, uh, from Nickelback, two of the most polarizing guys in Canada. <laughs> yeah. <no kidding. laughs> and that's, and in fairness to Dion, like, like one of the best guys I've ever played with. So wow. competitive. He's a character. He's funny. Like I, yeah. I could go on about Dion as well. I, it's anyway, I thought it, I'd add it, that because I don't want to just no, rip it, no, it's so true because um, I always say public perception and private perception, a lot of times they match, but sometimes they're complete opposite. Yeah. And with Dion, it's complete opposite, public and, and private perception. And even with Chad, like there, he's a lot different in the public than he is in private. And, you know, as you can know, we can all speak to this, Wally, like there's people that you meet. 
they're they're really good in front of the camera. They're really good at like the PR game, and then they turn the camera off, and they're not good people. Yeah, and you know those two are not like especially Dion. Like Dion, he's such a class guy. He's such a great person, but you know the way it ended in Toronto, like you know that city was was hard on him, and you know he's such a good person and. You know, I, I've got I've got so much time for him. He's he's a he's a quality guy. So yeah, maybe in the like the the second time I can be a spectator instead of the guy who just literally took, you know, hijacked the segment here. I apologize. <laughs> no, was- we're hey, we're we're looking forward to it. I, I look forward to Noodles 2.0. And if you can get Dion to come on, then I will have the three of you on, and I will say nothing and just let you three talk for an hour. We'll try. Yeah, he's tough. He's you yeah. know he you know why. He's he's such a close friend of mine, but he like once in a while he'd be like, "Oh, TSN talking, not Jamie." And I'm like, "All right, knock it off." Like, and, and 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 now you know now Matt that you're in in the dark side, like he'll be like, "Oh, I can't say anything." Like it's exactly right. He'll even send me DMs like once in a while, making fun of a segment that Wally and I did, just to, like some passive aggressive jabs at me. And I'm like, "Come on, man." The funny part is he watches it all. Like yeah. he'll like. He'll flip something from me from like overdrive and be like, that was really funny. I'm like, oh, really? I thought you didn't read the media. I thought you didn't pay attention to the media. Yeah. You know, but yeah. yeah, he's such a good guy. Is the, your, your last game in, as a member of the Ottawa Senators is in Calgary. Uh, it's Craig Anderson has just left to be with his wife, Nicole, who just got diagnosed with cancer. And Hammond starts that game, gets hurt. And then you get in and yeah. uh, right. And then allow, I think you allow four goals and it's a five, two loss. Did, did it was not any... my night that night. No, but no, it, it wasn't was anybody's no, night, In right? fairness to Driggs, it was nobody's night. Like, that's yeah, a like, tough <laughs> building to play in. You, ha- you have terrible defensemen in front of you. Yes, that <laughs> night you did. <laughs> no, that was like, a tough night for me. I remember that. Uh, I remember that pretty vividly. I remember, you know, when you go into a situation like that, I remember at one point, Mark Crawford looks at me on the bench when Hammond's in. He goes, hey, this guy's on a short leash. Make sure you're ready. And I was like, geez. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I'm like sweating on the bench. Like, oh, my God. You know, hopefully yeah. I'm all right. And then uh, I remember a couple things from that day. And then uh, they go in. I, yeah, I think Hammond, Hammy let in one. I think we're up 2-1 after the first. And uh, I go in the room and Hammy's like, yeah, groin gone so i'm like geez so then dion Fanuf walks over to me and he just looks at me and he goes confidence <laughs> and walks away i'm like i don't know how i don't know if that instilled any confidence what a guy eh? like he's, and he's so full of shit sometimes too i see i don't even remember that part anyway i'm gonna have to text him after this <laughs> 